Now, it has been 88 days since the BP oil rig blast that killed 11 workers and began the worst oil spill in U.S. history. Now, for months, 24 hour cable news stations have been showing the images of 60,000 barrels of oil a day gushing into the Gulf of Mexico, just running them day after day at the bottom of the screen. Now, BP has managed to stop the leak at least temporarily. And it's, you know, everyone says hooray. Stories all over the media are like, you know, this is over. They've closed up shop. They've gone home, even though a disaster still lurks. Here to talk about why this is going on is former CNN producer Danny Schechter. Now, Danny, I want to first bring up a few of my favorite headlines uh, that I've found on this uh, BP oil cap. Let's bring up uh, uh, the first graphic that we have, which is a headline that reads, uh, Oil Watch, BP caps oil well optimism growing hourly. Meanwhile, you have a quote from a fisherman who has completely lost his uh, living, who says it's like putting a Band-Aid on a dead man, in my opinion. So, you know, not a lot of optimism on the ground. Uh, I want to go to another one, another headline that says, Cheers as Gulf oil spill is capped at last. There it is. You know, big hoorays. Now, meanwhile, you have... A uh, BP official, chief operating officer, saying uh, it wasn't a time for celebration, despite uh, this uh, accomplishment by some. So, Danny, I'm curious what you think this disconnect is about. Why are suddenly people celebrating in the headlines when, when you read the fine print, people are saying this is a temporary fix? Well, when you review the coverage, what you saw you know, was uh, constantly an emphasis sort of on numbers, you know, uh, 200 million gallons pumped out, uh, 4 million gallons of oil, uh, you, know, at, at, you know, at risk, $2 billion in cost, 572 miles of coastal areas, 80,000 square miles with no fishing. You know, it's almost like uh, a statistical computation like a ball game. Uh, and I, I think that the idea was, the drama was, you know, could they cap the well or not. When they capped the well, at least for now, suddenly, for many, the story was over because that's how they defined the story. They didn't define the story in terms of the policy lapses that allowed this to happen, the lack of an ongoing plan to prevent more uh, spills like this, control of our resources, uh, what the proper role of government should be in regulating uh, these oil companies, uh, and the like. So the, the real problems sort of kind of uh, got lost in all the drama of all that, you know, oil being pumped out, you know, in the corner of your screen uh, every night without much consideration of what was, was going to happen next. And because I can't, still, and I can't and help but wonder wood, so if with Without these images coming 24 hours from the news wires, wires of the oil gushing out, if that's had now that those aren't there, if that's had something to do with stopping it. But I want to get to the point that you made and ask, you know, you have been a CNN producer. Is there some deeper factors that are driving the mainstream media cycle, this 24 hour coverage that are fueling uh, this kind of storytelling that, you know, the oil gushing is a story, but the oil being capped is not and the other issues that are still lurking there and that everything that still is going to go on the mess that's going to be cleaned up for years and the devastation that this is still causing and the uh, band-aid that could easily come off that that's not a story well it's disaster sort of sells catastrophe sells fear of apocalypse sells you know uh, that's the kind of subtext and narrative that we've that we've seen uh, by and large and the idea of conflict you know Obama versus BP uh, the people of the Gulf versus Obama or versus Obama and BP all of these kind of conflicts with people yelling at each other makes for good television it doesn't necessarily uh, raise awareness Not that's why I think both the president and the admiral uh, in, in the Gulf are, are, you know, not celebrating yet. They're really watching this very carefully because, you know, we, we may have another leak or we may, this leak may not be really capped. We don't know yet. Uh, and so this has to do with, you know, pressure gauges and, and you know, kind of science. Uh, it's not about, you know, uh, can we get this done before the next commercial? Right. And unfortunately, a lot of cable runs on that kind of a cycle. Now, I want to, you touched upon the president and you also talk, touched upon if this is going to work. I want to take this opportunity to bring up a few more of today's headlines. This one reads, Obama, cap on oil spill, good news. And then when you read a paragraph, 
uh, in another story, or later, later in that story, rather, or excuse me, another story, uh, the cap is basically, it remains unclear whether the jury rigged cap, they're calling it jury rigged, and testing has yet to conclusively determine whether pressure within the well would cause other leaks to spring. I mean, why isn't that the headline? Yeah. But why let the facts get in the way of a good headline? Here's the New York Post. <laughs> Oil's well. Okay? Uh, this is the kind of uh, fun that headline writers have uh, to try to summarize a complicated story, you know, with a punchy, you know, uh, quote or a punchy headline. And unfortunately, the long-term da damage to the ecology there, the fear of what will happen when the hurricane season really starts and will the marshes be able to do what they normally have done to try to uh, maintain the ecology in, in the Gulf of uh, Mexico and the Mississippi. Delta. None of those issues are considered very sexy. It's much nicer to see, uh, for the TV guys, you know, to see this oil well, uh, you know, constantly uh, chugging and for people to say, see, nobody can fix it, you know, kind of gives people who are covering it a sense of superiority to the people who actually have to uh, get in there and resolve these problems. And I think we're not and this is not over yet okay. by any means. And, well, you know, let me don't ask forget, you this. Many of the other oil companies did the same thing. Yeah. Danny, uh, at the same time, yes. we know that bad news sells a lot better than good news. That's why no one is in the business of, you know, having, you know, happy stories at the top of your newscast. In addition, pictures of oil drenched pelicans are very powerful if, uh, you know, the, the oil isn't gushing out of the pipe anymore. So, I don't know. Is this uh, some kind of example of liberal media bias, these oils well stories? I don't, I don't think it's liberal bias because that headline was in the conservative New York Post. I think this is sort of an American approach uh, to media. It's to try to simplify. It's to try to dumb down the issue. It's try to find some sort of conflict between bad guys and good guys. That's the, the, the narrative here. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, it doesn't lead to people, you know, believing that we need a more rational policy. We need to really think through how are we going to deal with this oil a problem? You'll remember when Obama spoke, he raised this question of imported oil and the need to deal with this problem. Right. Now. And, and know, Danny, sort of Danny, we're out of down. time, but you just have to wonder who is getting dumber by it all. That was former CNN producer Danny Schechter with that analysis.